Hello. Uh, welcome to the Judge Ben Show. My name is Ben Joseph. I'm a retired Vermont trial judge. This is a program in which I interview people about uh, subject uh, that come up in uh, law in Vermont. Today, uh, my guest is an attorney, Jim Dumont, from Bristol. And um, he represents Physicians, Family and Friends Education Fund and has taken a pretty uh, important role in uh, trying to uh, uh, regulate the le retail uh, sales of marijuana, which are going to start in 2022. Um, this uh, law has been passed by the legislature, and it's created something called the Cannabis Control Board. Cannabis is a word that is being used instead of marijuana, I suspect because marijuana is a word with negative connotations, <laughs> understandably so. So they like to say, the people who are pushing this stuff like to call marijuana cannabis. And I can't get around it because it's in the statutes. And um, this legislation, which is going to create retail sales of marijuana in our state starting next year, has something has created something called the Cannabis Control Board, or the CCB. And um, that, uh, what's your understanding? Is the Cannabis Control Board going to set up the rules under which this stuff can be advertised and sold? Sure. Um, the Cannabis Control Board it has three members, uh -huh. a chair and two members appointed by the governor, uh -huh. and they have a huge agenda. They, have, they are issuing rules, they're proposing rules to go into effect to govern growing of cannabis products, uh -huh. uh, manufacture or distilling the, the THC, the cannabis from what's grown, wholesale sales, retail sales, packaging, advertising, and licensing of all the people who do all of that. Wow. It's a huge job they have in front of them. Wow, 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 wow. Um. <laughs> Well, um, have you made any proposals to the CCB for how they should uh, approach these tasks? Yes, well, on behalf of the Education Fund, I focused on labeling and advertising. Okay. Um, and l let me just say that while my client doesn't agree with everything the, the CCB is doing, it has to be said they have a huge agenda and they're trying their best um, it is Do they have a staff, these three people? They have a staff, they have counsel, they have staff. Um, and I've l sat in some of their meetings. There's a, I have a large group of very vocal folks who believe absolutely that marijuana, THC, cannabis, that these are good things. And uh, the board has to wade through all of the anecdotes and wade through all the half-truths and the wishful thinking and make a decision based on the facts and the law, and, and it's not easy. So um, while we don't agree with everything they're proposing, they have a tough job, and we, we recognize that. So THC stands for, as I understand it, and I may not pronounce this correctly, tetrahydrocannabinoid? Sounds right to me. Got that right? <laughs> That's the chemical that is present in marijuana, which causes um, people to get high for want of a better expression. Do I have that right? Yes, and that, I mean, from my personal perspective, since I went to college in the early 70s, mm -hmm. when I got into this and when I was hired to work on this, I thought, marijuana, well, you know, what's the problem with marijuana? Well, it turns out the marijuana that I experienced when I was in high school mm -hmm. and when I was in college is a completely different animal than what we've got now because the THC level in it is so much higher. Right. Um, I'm not an expert on it, but I know it's, it's, it's my experience as a college student does not reflect the current reality. Um, mm -hmm. So um, the education fund has been, been particularly concerned. We know it's legal. Each town can vote whether to opt in. Each town and city gets to vote whether to opt in or opt out to allow retail sales. Mm -hmm. The towns and cities have no right to opt in or opt out if people want to grow or manufacture marijuana or cannabis products, that's entirely up to the board. But as far as retail sales, the way the law stands now, a town has to vote yes to allow that to happen, or the city has to vote yes. And we know it's going to happen. Um, the, the, the focus we have right now is on advertising. Mm -hmm. um, 
the Vermont Medical Society, which is composed of every physician in Vermont. Mm -hmm. And these are not people who are in the pocket of the industry. They're not in the pocket of, of diehard opponents. They are in the, in the business of protecting their patients and the public. The Vermont Medical Society adopted a resolution in November with very clear warnings they want in all advertising. Oh. And we have submitted the Vermont Medical Society's warnings to the CCB and they have not so far agreed to those. So th this is the, cr the critical issue right now. The CC well, these warnings would be in all advertisements? Yes. And would they be printed on the packages for the products? That's, that's labeling as, mm. as distinct from advertising. Oh, okay. And um, the Vermont Medical Society has proposed the same warning on the packaging mm -hmm. and on the advertising. Mm -hmm. And the CCB is also proposing the same warning on the packaging and in the advertising, but the difference is in what will the warning be? <laughs> well, that, yeah, right. So the CCB has proposed a warning that I, I counted the words, it's 138 words. Now, I know there was a, a, um, an ad in Vermont that, you, that was, was very effective where somebody would read the words really, really quest, fast. It may have been Cheese Trader, I can't remember what it was, mm -hmm. but it was very funny, but you couldn't really tell what he was saying. You would have to read the CCB's warning really, really fast <laughs> for people not to just tune it, turn it off or stop listening, because it's 138 words. Yeah. Vermont Medical Society has a 38-word warning, which I will read to you right now. Please. It's very distinct. Okay. And it's clear, and you'll remember it. Mm -hmm. And this is how it goes. Warning. Cannabis THC may cause, one, psychosis, two, impaired driving, mm -hmm. three, addiction, four, suicide attempt, five, uncontrollable vomiting, mm. six, harm to fetus or nursing baby. And note that the psychosis and the suicide attempts can occur in individuals with no previous history of psychosis or mental illness. End of warning. End of ad. And if I were to read to you now the 138 version, <laughs> all your listeners would well, wait, I'm go sorry. get a co I'm coffee. I'm time limited. Yeah. Yes. Right. So every, every one of these six parts is based on peer-reviewed medical literature. Right. Well, I can tell you, that so far this year, 16 people have been killed in auto accidents caused by people driving under the influence of marijuana. In Vermont? In Vermont. Wow. Last year it was 12. The number goes up and down. But for the last six years, there's always been a certain number of people killed in the highways. Um, it's, uh, well, it's a serious ongoing problem. So I thought it might be useful to share with your, your audience what I learned when I was working on this, which is I had no idea that there was such a thing as uncontrollable vomiting. No. I had never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And um, Well, you're the lawyer, and the doctor's next. You're, yeah, doctor's you're, next. You're, yeah. But uh, one of the things I, I saw was this video uh -huh. that describes the uncontrolled vomiting. Oh. And it, I'm focusing on that today because the public has no idea what the effects of the current product are. And this is right. an example that 99.99% of the public has no idea is associated with high levels of THC that's now in this product. Well, and it's also, as you've pointed out before, the, the, product that's being, the products that are being pushed now are not what they were when you were a kid in the 70s. These are much different things. Right. With high concentrations of THC and like candy, like gummies that are being sold. And I'm, I'm sure there are going to be children who are damaged by this stuff. Right. So on that point, yeah. the CCB has been clear about having really strict controls on what is marketed to children. Uh -huh. However, the problem is once it's out there, you know, a 21-year-old buys the gummies right. with a high level of cannabis or THC in it. Right. How is that going to be enforced so that the 21-year-old doesn't give it to the 14-year-old or the 10-year-old? Yeah. So yeah. we have, that's why advertising is so important to get the message out to everybody, even not even the person who may not be the purchaser. Right. It could be the parents at home, or it could be the friend who says, you know what, I heard on the radio, this is, re this is dangerous for kids. Maybe I shouldn't take it, even though I didn't buy it myself. The kids may see the advertising and say, well, maybe I shouldn't take it. Right. Well, that's one of the reasons we're doing this show today. <laughs> right. So you want to see a, sh a video on okay. uh, uncontrollable vomiting, Mm -hmm. which none of us would have expected from smoking marijuana. Mm -hmm. All right. Hopefully I can do this.
Here we go. Doctors are seeing an increase in a violent illness. Doctors there are staying vigilant of potential marijuana-related health problems. Doctors are finding some cases where the drug itself is actually making people sick. What these patients really have been experiencing is cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. This is something that's caused by chronic marijuana use. CHS has only been recognized for about the past decade, and nobody knows exactly how many people suffer from it. There's concern that we will see more and more cases of CHS. Ouch. All I want to do is feel better. I don't feel like myself. I don't feel safe. Every morning I'm really just in bed. Okay, okay, okay. Five straight days of just throwing up every day, not being able to eat. I couldn't keep a drop of water down. I was completely convinced that I was going to die. I was fighting just to stay in this world. This is a problem and people don't know. I didn't know it was possible that it would mess up your stomach to that extent. Every single person I've told what this is was blown away, had no clue that it existed. I couldn't travel, I couldn't go to work, I couldn't hang out with my friends, I couldn't eat food that I liked, it ruins everything. For people who experienced it, it is extremely disturbing and debilitating and may be more common than we imagine. Heat is the one thing that makes you feel better. I was probably in the bath about eight hours per day. Yeah, I probably do 20 showers a day. The water's so hot that it's scalding them. Severely burned on my back from all the showering I was doing. I was just cooking myself. I was so desperate for relief. It is literally so much better than the pain that's in my stomach to a point where I'd rather burn myself than deal with the pain that I have. I've never been in so much pain in my life. I missed an entire year of work. I was so deeply in denial, I never even Googled the symptoms of cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. People with CHS are suffering for years with symptoms and are having multiple hospitalizations and hundreds of thousand dollars of medical bills. Close to 20 years that I, um, I suffered without having any knowledge of CHS at all. You tell people what you have and they don't believe it. Nobody believes Nobody it. Nobody believes it. They just can't understand it. Like, it's got to be something else. They just couldn't believe it. It's like, Mom, I just don't understand. They always told us pop was harmless. I had all kinds of tests. They removed my appendix. If anything, they said that the smoking, the cannabis would help. The nurse told me about it, and I go, no, no, I just, you know. That's just not true. You know, marijuana is completely benign. Nobody has died from marijuana. Well, it turns out that's not true either. In his final hospitalization, he had not eaten for more than 50 days. I kept saying to them, listen, I don't think this kid's gonna make it. People can actually die from this. Um, nobody took it seriously. This is about a 17-year-old child lost his life over something that could have easily be, been prevented. I want education. I was not able to save him, but I'm gonna make sure that his story is out there and some people are helped. as many people as I can pretty much be educated on it. You know, there's people in the medical industry and in the marijuana industry who are potentially giving out advice to try and deal with this problem that could lead to somebody dying. I thought transparency was part of the promise of legalized pot, and no one has been transparent. We are not trying to demonize marijuana. It is a wonder. It just needs to be uh, used correctly, not abused. We have no research. We don't know anything about it, really, because we've never studied it. I think it's very important that we get research done so that way more people don't get sick.
Those, those kinds of testimonies, I think, are more important than what you and I could say, you know, the people who have actually been through this stuff. Um, this is really something. Do you think that the, uh, this legalization and the advertising and all this is going to lead to increased use of the drug? Well, I'm just a dumb lawyer. I'm not a social scientist. But I don't think people would be spending money on advertising if they thought it was a waste of money. <laughs> so the point here is that advertisers, if the advertising is going to be allowed, right. then that's the question. You know, should we allow advertising? Do you advertising? think it should be allowed? Well, the legislature has already made that decision, that it should be allowed. Okay? The statute says it, it, it's allowed. Let's regulate it. So we're here. But the statute has specific, it's, it's specific as to wh how the, the advertising should be done, isn't it? It's, it's not very, well, in some ways, yes. For example, it says it, 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 there's, you can't advertise to an audience that's intentionally of, of minors. Oh, well, right? that, that's a yeah. step in so the right direction. It's clear, though, to me as a lawyer looking at this, that the legislature said to the CCB, regulate advertising. Okay. So it's, I don't, it's CCB would be, in, the, in dealing with another legal issue, if they said we're not going to allow it at all. So if, if it's going to happen, mm -hmm. let's regulate it with regulation that is effective. Okay. Okay. And then, I, I remember you wrote something about the legislation says there shall be warnings, right? There's, yes. It, it's, it's not up to the CCB. That decision's already been made, that the warnings will be there. Yes, the decision has been made. There shall be warnings on packaging, okay. and there shall be warnings in advertising. The question okay. is, what will the warnings be? Right, well, yeah, you know, okay. Well, the warning about psychosis. Why is there a warning about psychosis? Um, this is something else I learned that I had no idea of, that people can have psychotic breaks. In other words, they're in a different world. They're not, as you know, as a retired judge, people who have psychosis legally aren't even responsible for their actions. Yeah. If, if you believe that, you know, Saturn is telling you what to do, and you're just doing what Saturn tells you, you're not legally responsible for your actions. That is a psychosis, a psychotic break from reality. And people do terrible things or horrible things, yeah. sometimes wonderful things when they're, you know, depends mm -hmm. on the day. But um, people without any history of psychosis, particularly with higher levels of THC in the product, mm -hmm. according to the peer-reviewed medical literature, are experiencing psychosis that is attributed to the marijuana product. And some of them are, I gather, uh, well, I know, have become addicted to the use of this stuff. Is that right? Yes, and I think this is probably, I'm not the expert on this, but it, it appears that this is a result of the marijuana having much higher potency than the stuff from the 60s and the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, that you or I grew up with. We won't ask you what you did because you're a retired judge. No, no, you all, oh, I'm, I'm not, a, I, I grew up in the 60s and it was illegal and I was gonna be a, an attorney and I thought, no, I'm not going near that stuff. Yeah. So I've never experimented with this, never, never. Well, on that score, you did go to college. I certainly did. And you must have had roommates. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, my, in my college environment, if you're going to breathe, yeah. you had to inhale marijuana smoke because it was everywhere. My roommates were all athletes as I was, and none of them ever smoked marijuana. Wow. Never. I've never heard of that. Uh, well, uh, I was a wrestler at Penn, and, huh. and uh, I was conditioning all year round, and, and I thought it's stupid. I mean, I just thought it was stupid. Right. You know, you, 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 it's like, you know, it's one of the things that has really impressed me recently I'm seeing ads on television for alcohol. Have you seen this ad yet? It's some young young man walking down the street carrying a, a like a, a a a bag with Crown Royal whiskey. And he goes down the street and he's doing nice things for other people. He's helping a kid, he's you know, carrying a bag for somebody else. And then he gets apparently gets to his home and he goes up and he holds up this whiskey and he's ma making a gift to it to his mother, to his mother. And then the two of them are drinking, you know, and I think to myself, wow. So then, now there's kind of going to be a competition between alcohol and marijuana. The cannabis uh, guys 
are going to be trying to capture some of the alcohol drinkers and have them <laughs> using this stuff. It'll be THC instead of alcohol. God, what, it's sick. And, and that gets to, to the heart of it. I was thinking about this as I drove up here this uh -huh. morning. Yeah. If you asked most people you met on the street, they would say, we know that if you drink too much alcohol, you're going to have a problem. You may yeah. become an alcoholic. You may be driving in a dangerous way. You're not going to work. Everybody knows that about alcohol. People don't understand that marijuana it has the, also has to be used carefully. Mm -hmm. As with alcohol, maybe more so. It's not danger-free. And that's, that's the problem. People think it's completely harmless. And it's not. Well, you know, see, I don't really have... I, I, my social circle doesn't involve anybody who's smoking marijuana. I mean, there are some people I know who... Drink, I don't drink any alcohol. My, my wife passed away eight years ago, and I thought, I'm the last grandparent, and uh, I'm trying to monitor my health. So I don't drink that stuff. And, I, and I, frankly, I don't miss it. I think that it's, it's something that requires... Um, Self-discipline. And I think addiction is, is a chronic problem with marijuana, from what I can see. That there are people who are, they have, what do they call it? Cannabis-induced psychosis, CIP. You know, I see that in some of the literature I read. And, and I just think the, uh, the social cost of promoting this stuff and selling it, you know, alcohol kills more than 10,000 people a year in the United States in traffic accidents alone. And then there are all these other health problems that flow from it. And to promote the use of another drug that has these terrible consequences, it's just, I think it was a bad decision, but I think people like yourself and the organizations you represent gotta do what you can to control the harm. This is really, this is a big, mo big moment. So let, let's talk about where the public can have a say right now. All right. The CCB, it is in the process of issuing rules. Right. Those rules get filed with the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. and then the rules are put on the, the CCB's website, and then they have a public comment period. Oh. And then if 25 or more people ask for a hearing, then they have to have a public hearing. Oh. And the rules don't become final until after that whole process, that process is done, and then it goes to a committee of the legislature, oh. Legislative Committee on, on Administrative Rules, LCAR, L-C-A-R, mm -hmm and the rule still isn't final until they look at it and they take a vote on it. Wow. And after they take a vote on it, this is true of all rulemaking in Vermont. Mm -hmm. After they take a vote on it, right. if, they've, if they issue a vote that says we're not happy with the rule, it mm -hmm. had, we don't accept it, the rule can still go into effect, but if it's challenged in court, instead of the challenger having to prove that the rule is unlawful, if the legislative committee voted against it, then the agency has to prove in court that the rule is lawful. Oh. So it's a, it, it makes a difference. So if people have concerns, for example, about the advertising rule, mm -hmm. and we want a warning that people actually listen to and learn from, mm -hmm. they should write the CCB during the common period or before. They should write their legislator. Mm -hmm. And it may be the CCB will come up with a better rule. I know they're listening. You know, they're trying to do the right thing. So how do you know that? Because I've watched their meetings. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a, it's, it's clear. I mean, they're not in anybody's pocket. Oh. They're not in my client's pocket. They're not in the industry's pocket. They've got a tough job. They're trying to do the right thing. And right now, they're primarily hearing from the advocates. The, the legalization advocates, they've had success in the legislature, which is fine. Um, and now... They I, I've got to say, I don't think it's fine, but it's a fact. It is a fact. We've right? got to live with it. And if you watch these hearings, the meetings of the CC CCB, oh, they're flashing you. We've only got okay. five more okay. minutes. All right. So um, <laughs> the people who come to these meetings are advocates. Right. And the CCB needs to hear from everybody else. Okay. Okay. And you think that they should, well, how, how, do, how do they communicate? They have a public comment portal on their website. Uh -huh. So okay. you could go to the uh, Vermont Cannabis Control Board. You could Google it. You'll show up at their website. And if mm -hmm. you click the right place, there's a comment portal. Okay. You can submit comments. All right. Um, or you could, you could um, that's the best way. Just go to their comment portal. Mm -hmm. And, and it, uh, you know, it's, it, I've, uh, I've been derelict in this. Is there a phone number that people can call into? Is there, 
There probably is, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But well. in this day and age, I think filing a comment online is the most effective way. And mm -hmm. the comment could say, we want a warning that reflects what our doctors have told us is necessary. Mm -hmm. The Vermont Medical Society said we need to tell people these six problems, mm -hmm. keep it short and sweet, but it has to be these six problems, most of which the public has no idea of. That's the thing that concerns me. So the, so the people who are not using this stuff have no notion as to what the consequences can be. And if it's advertised and there are going to be new users, th this is going to cause an awful lot of grief. Sad. Well, we kind of run out of time. You know, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thanks for having me. I've been vaccinated. You can shake my hand. <laughs> okay. Thank you for looking in. This has been a uh, this has been a, a, a terrific moment. I think. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll communicate with uh, uh, the Learn About Sam uh, uh, email address that has been put on the screen, and do what you can to 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 educate yourself about what's going on here. It's going to have consequences for a lot of people. The 16 people who have been killed so far this year by marijuana influence driving, I'm afraid that number is only going to go up from here. Thank you for looking in. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.